What danger haunted Tiffany since childhood? And I married my stalker. And he um, called a few phone companies, got my number paid for it. With those type of things should never, it should not happen. It's still hard to deal with sometimes. It make you feel unsafe. It make you feel like don't nobody care about you when you tell nobody believe. The first person I ever been in love with was my mother. She used to say to me, you stupid. You ain't no good. You. She would get some mad, she would hit you. She. I wanted to die because I felt like, why am I even here? After all those challenges, Tiffany tried to be happy again. She started dating Common, but was it the right decision? Then the police will come and they arrest me. I'm grateful to have her in my life. Do you really love me? What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Never trust nobody. Tiffany is one of the best comedians nowadays. But what tragic path led her to comedy? You said jokes and laughter helped you survive. How so? They helped me to deal with the hard stuff and find the funny in it and laugh about it. Why could Tiffany not hold back her tears while talking about this? All I wanted to do was hang out with all the comedians and that was making my ex-husband so mad. He snatched me by my neck and slammed me into the wall. And I had broke up with him. I left him. I was like, I can't live like that. I can't do that. I'm not living that life. And um, he wanted me back. We got married again. I didn't know any other way to be loved. Maybe this was the only man that I had ever thought truly loved me. Tiffany didn't even know what it meant to be loved. At the age of three, her father left her and never came back. And later, her mother suffered brain damage in a car accident. I was eight, uh, almost nine, and my mom had to learn how to walk, talk, eat, everything all over again. She was able to do things and stuff, but... <sighs> so she would get so mad, she'd hit you. She, you know, if she couldn't express herself, she just... I would try to make my mom laugh and try to make her cool, because if she was laughing, she wasn't hitting. So she used to say to me, you stupid. You ain't no good. You ain't. You look like your ugly ass daddy. You ain't never gonna be shit. Very soon, her mother lost custody. And Tiffany ended up in a foster family. I remember when I first went into foster care, I hated it. I didn't like it. It was messed up. I didn't want to be a part of it. I hated it because kids used to make fun of me. A lot of times I feel like you're just a paycheck to a family, like not really a person. That's what it felt like. Tiffany was desperate to feel love. I had been praying to God to send me a man that really liked me, that really want to be around me. And then God sent me a stalker. He um, called a few phone companies, got my number paid for it. So he was like, I want you to marry me. That's what I want. And it was a good relationship at first. He was feeding me three times a day and stuff. He used to take me on long walks. He did choke me a few times. But then the police would come and they arrest him. He'd go to jail for like a day or so. I filed for divorce, but I don't know what was wrong with me because I still wanted my husband back. Even though I had a restraining order, I think we can work through this. Tiffany's husband tried hard to win her back. As a result, she married him for a second time some level, I felt like if I loved him enough, I could heal him from being mad. But this time, he wanted to control her even more than before. He told me, like, you can't receive no phone calls or text messages after 10 o'clock because that's disrespecting our relationship. Here, you ain't got to do that comedy shit no more. And I, was, I love comedy. You can't take that away from me. I'm this. This is my safe place. One day, Tiffany returned home and found out that she was now homeless. But besides the restraining order, she also learned her husband's secret. Why hasn't the rent been paid? Turns out he was paying child support. He had another child who he basically abandoned because he didn't like her mom. I got a divorce and this time it stuck. I couldn't be with anybody who could abandon his child. That was my personal boundary and I had finally found it. Tiffany had only one thing left, her comedy. By making jokes, she was trying to forget all the terrible stories of her past. That it took me over 20 years to get here. Because I can take a punch now. Uh, you can't never knock me out. Comedy is the instrument and the key to keep me being positive and alive. But it feels so good to me to laugh. And it feels even better to see other people laugh. Like now she jokes a lot about her dark childhood. Tiffany even said she is grateful it happened with her. 
from all this craziness and this madness and bad things happen. But from that, from all that, it's it's garbage. It's it's garbage. I'm gonna use that as fertilizer to have an awesome, fantastic life. After the years of traumatic experiences, Tiffany decided to give her happiness another try. That's when she met Common. I know that uh, Common is probably gonna treat me like a queen. But was the woman right? Is she happy now? Wasn't it another of Tiffany's fatal mistakes? I went on a virtual date with Common and it was super fun. And he sent me flowers, it was romantic. He sent me food. It was nice. We did. She's a wonderful woman, a queen, and just a beautiful person, man. Uh, you know, I just care for her a lot, enjoy her, and um, am grateful to have her in my life. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> Best relationship, relationship I've been in right my now. whole life so far. And common is not so common. He's rare, isn't he? Yeah, he's special. After the years of abuse and hardship, Tiffany has not lost her faith, neither in love nor God. God is number one, Already, so whatever's in his but, but you know, She uses her voice to help other people, to comfort them, and show them that they are not alone. I will always tell the truth, even when it's not fun. I hope some young girl can learn from my mistakes and avoid what I went through. I'm keeping myself moving. I'm like, because I feel like there's always a voice in your head. It's you, right? And those thoughts, those voices, those things control your universe. It paints how you live. Does Tiffany motivate you to keep going and create your own happiness? What would you tell her if you'd had such a chance? <laughs>